Welcome once more to the hallowed halls of our grand library. Today our tale takes us into the depths of history, where we shall uncover the secrets of the exotic jungle region known as the Ungoro Crater. Join me, Hogarth the Orc Slayer, as we weave the tale of this remote and tropical wilderness. The Ungoro Crater, known as the Godlands in the ancient Karaji language, can be found in the heart of southern Kalimdor, bordered by Tanaris, Silithus and Oldham. Despite its isolation, situated between three vast deserts, this region is teeming with unique flora and fauna. Here you'll encounter a diverse array of inhabitants, from tranquil earth elementals to ferocious devil souls, making it clear that the locals should not be underestimated. Numerous adventurers carry only a handful of narratives from their journeys through the crater, yet we possess a modest account that permits us to explore the ancient past of this perilous jungle realm. The story of the Ungoro Crater transports us back to the formative days of Azeroth and commences with the titanic keeper, Freya. Today, many wanderers become especially attentive upon hearing the name Freya, evoking memories of their clashes with her in the titan-forged stronghold of Ulduar. However, in a time predating the rebellion of the titan keeper Loken, and the corruption of Freya by the dread old god named yogg saron Freya held a pivotal position in the ordering of Azeroth. While the Titan pantheon journeyed through the cosmos, orchestrating the structure of worlds and in pursuit of their fellow Titans, a wondrous new realm, later known as Azeroth, was gradually taking shape in a remote corner of the vast cosmos. The pantheon of order took an active role in this creation. They brought into existence the Titan Forged, various denizens of Azeroth, and bestowed power upon the dragon aspects through their chosen titanic keepers. The Titans, in their quest to forge the world, empowered several races to assist in their grand endeavour. Over countless ages, the Titans moulded and manipulated the very foundation of the world, until they had fashioned a single, pristine continent. In the heart of this continent, the Titans constructed a lake brimming with scintillating energy. This remarkable lake, now known as the Well of Eternity, would serve as the wellspring of life. Its potent energies would nourish the very bones of the planet and kindle life in the fertile soil. With the passage of time, flora, fauna, monstrous creatures and beings of all sorts began to thrive upon this primordial land. As the sun set on their final day of labour, the Titans christened this continent Kalimdor. During the world's formation, Freya played a pivotal role by crafting the Emerald Dream, a realm intended to serve as the fundamental blueprint for the planet's existence. Some recount tales of Freya weaving the Emerald Dream into existence from nothingness, while others propose that the mysterious realm was in some form a manifestation born from the slumbering world soul of Azeroth, and believe Freya harnessed this dream and shaped it into what would come to be recognised as the Emerald Dream. Within the boundaries of the Emerald Dream, Freya planted Gahania, the Mother Tree, an immense arboreal wonder perched atop a lofty peak. From its branches sprouted countless fruits and flowers, emanating new life that rippled across the land. Freya also formed numerous pools of life at other locations within the Dream, yet Gahania held a distinct significance. It was the first, the tallest and the most resplendent acting as a source of restoration and equilibrium that extended beyond the boundaries of the dream and into the physical realm. Gehenia served as the guiding light for the natural life of Azeroth. Freya embarked on a quest across the world, seeking out regions where the potent energies from the Well of Eternity had gathered. With her skilled hands, she sculpted life of remarkable diversity and scattered it throughout the world. These sites where Freya worked her miraculous craft were positioned at the polar extremities of the world, encompassing areas that would be later known as the Sholazar Basin, the Vale of Eternal Blossoms, and finally, the Unguro Crater. Freya eventually fell victim to the madness inflicted by the old god, yogg Saron. Nonetheless, her legacy endures within the Unguro Crater. kaz entrusted his apprentice, Nablia, with the responsibility of overseeing this unique region. Typically, the Titanic Watchers refrain from direct involvement in Azeroth's affairs, but in Ungoro, they have the liberty to adopt a more hands-on approach. In Freya's perception, 
The specific locations within Azeroth held the utmost potential, and she frequently utilised places like the Ungoro Crater for her experiments. The intricacies of these experiments often extend beyond the understanding of us, the travellers, as we may not fully grasp or comprehend what unfolds in these regions. However, there is an account from a fellow traveller who managed to glean some insights from the Titanic Watcher, Nablia. In her own words, she says the following about the region. I am also performing tests and recording the results. These tests allow me to observe that which most interests me. Simple stimulus response tests. Normally, my kind does not interfere with the matters of Azeroth, but here in Ungoro, we are free to take a more direct approach. As Ungoro is the experimental ground of the Titans, it is our right to do so. For example, say Kazgoroth wants to know what happens when one of his creations is exposed to a sulfurous hot spring. He could wait for millennia, observing and waiting for the creature to accidentally stumble and fall in. Or he could place the creature in the water himself. In Ungoro, we may do so. Many of the creatures here in the crater existed long before my master arrived, but some did not. Nevertheless, we observe them all without prejudice. One of the notable outcomes of these biological experiments is the birth of the wild gods. These entities represent the primal essence of life and nature, not only on Azeroth but also on other celestial bodies. Most often they take on the form of colossal creatures such as wolves, bears, tigers or birds. On Azeroth, the wild gods straddle two realms. They exist in the physical world, whilst their spirits are inexorably tied to the ethereal Emerald Dream. Many travellers have encountered wild gods during their journeys to the Arden world in the Shadowlands, where these beings find their rest once their physical forms have passed on. Among the distinguished wild gods are the twin bear deities, Ursok and Ursol, revered by the Firbolg tribes as ancient guardians. The Ungoro Crater remained a relatively peaceful realm for countless millennia, providing the Titanic Keepers with an ideal environment for their experiments on Azeroth. However, in a world like Azeroth, perpetual tranquility is a rarity. As years passed, the Ungoro Crater became embroiled in the conflict known as the War of the Shifting Sands. The War of the Shifting Sands, also known as the Karaji War, stands as a significant conflict that unfolded in the southern reaches of Kalimdor approximately 975 years before the onset of the First War. The Karaji, an insectoid race that had long remained dormant within the ancient titanic fortress of Ankaraj, were spurred into action by the sinister old god, Cthun. They surged forth from Ankaraj in overwhelming numbers, rapidly encroaching upon the Scythalus Desert. Responding to this dire threat, a formidable night elf coalition, under the leadership of arch-druid Fandral Staghelm, launched an offensive against the Karaji with the aim of driving them back to Ankaraj. The conflict ebbed and flowed, with the Night Elves making gains only to be met by fierce counterattacks from the Karaji. The full story of the War of the Shifting Sands is vast and will be recounted in detail on another occasion. During a phase of this war, the Night Elf army found itself retreating through the Ungoro Crater, ultimately reaching the border of the Tanaris Desert. In more recent times, the Alliance were given a stark reminder of the perils lurking within the Yungoro Crater. Prominent members of the Marshall expedition, including its leader, Willardan Marshall, embarked on a daring journey into the heart of this mysterious land. Willardan's motivations were varied, driven by whispers of the crater's precious crystals, unique flora, scientific prospects, and of course, the allure of discovering hidden treasures. However, upon their arrival in the Ungoro Crater, the Marshall expedition encountered a stark contrast to their expectations. Here, the untouched wilderness was inhabited by Azeroth's ancient dinosaurs, which roam freely and coexist, to some extent, with fire elementals. These elementals are led by their formidable lord, who goes by the name of Blaze Runner. Various travellers recount stories of either defeating this elemental in return for rewards offered by Willardan, while others believe that Blaze Runner still commands the volcanic ridge as rumoured in the past. The truth remains uncertain, leading adventurous souls pondering the quest that awaits. Due to the ambiguity surrounding the undeniable peril at the surface of the crater, 
The Marshall Expedition took initiative and established the Marshall Refuge on the northern fringes of the area. However, rest assured that the tale of the Ungoro Crater will continue to intertwine with the exploits of the Marshall Expedition later on. The crater found itself embroiled in conflict once more during the Anchorage War, sometimes termed the Second War of the Shifting Sands. Without delving too deeply into the particulars, the shattering of the gates of Ankaraj unleashed a flood of Karaji. In response, the combined forces of the Horde and the Alliance, under the supreme command of High Overlord Varok Saofang, rallied to halt the Karaji advance before they could overrun Silithus. The Karazi general, Rajax, led the opposing forces, unleashing a ceaseless horde of Silithid and Anubisaths upon Silithus. This conflict would later span all of Kalimdor, including that within the Ungoro Crater. Fortunately, the might of Kalimdor emerged victorious, and the remnants of the Karaji forces suffered defeat, and they withdrew to the ancient city fortress of Ankaraj. Years later, amid the widespread conflict engulfing Northrend and the ongoing war against the Lich King, an astonishing revelation came to light within the confines of the Ungoro Crater. In this region, a place known as Shaper's Terrace, closely tied to the Titans, was found. It became apparent that Kazgoroth once held a significant role in this place. Speculation suggests that Nablia now inhabits the Shaper's Terrace, engaged in various experiments on Kazgoroth's behalf. The Ungaro Crater is also adorned with remarkable Titan technology, and the Shaper's Terrace is accessible solely through the Waygate. This portal, a feat of Titan craftsmanship and arcane mastery, serves as a conduit connecting the southern expanse of the Sholazar Basin with the Shaper's Terrace in the Ungoro Crater. This Titan crafted marvel remains a testament to the enduring potency of ancient Titan artifacts. Although the twin device in Ungoro Crater lay dormant for seven centuries, its latent potential can be rekindled by activating switches located in the Maker's Overlook and the Maker's Perch. Once reactivated, the Waygate can instantaneously transport travellers from Sholazar Basin to Ungoro. Amidst the awakening of Deathwing the Destroyer and the subsequent cataclysmic upheaval of Azeroth, Marshall's refuge faced a perilous assault by Stone Guardians. This assault compelled the group to evacuate and establish a new haven with minimal casualties. Led by Willard and Marshall, they founded Marshall's Strand, which boasted several enhancements over their previous refuge. This resilience again demonstrated their ability to adapt to life within the challenging Ungoro Crater. During the cataclysmic upheaval, not only did the Marshall expedition face significant transformations, but the very landscape underwent profound alterations too. The region stretching between the Lakari tar pits and the marshlands also experienced a metamorphosis, as it became adorned with the abundance of blossoms brought forth by blood petals. In the years of the third invasion by the Burning Legion, Bungoro Crater faced an incursion by demons, which was fortunately promptly quelled. This remarkable event can be attributed to an unassuming paladin by the name of Maximilian of Northshire, whose exploits have gained significance in the post-shattering era, meriting a dedicated narrative of his own. Following the vanquishing of this demonic threat, the Ungoro Crater settled back into a period of serenity, where daring adventurers enter at their own peril. If your travels ever lead you through the southern realms of Kalandor in the near future, consider paying a visit to our old acquaintance, Willardon Marshall. Many of his expedition diaries find their place within our library, and it's high time they received some attention, as they've grown rather dusty over the years. Just make him aware, he owes us one. And so, as our exploration of this intriguing history of the Ungoro Crater draws to a close, we are left with a profound realisation that this distant and tropical wilderness has borne witness to the ascent and descent of civilizations, the epic clash of titans, and the unyielding spirit of intrepid explorers and adventurers. We've delved deep into the very essence of Azeroth's past, where the ancient deities and elemental forces once roamed. The Ungoro Crater, fittingly named the Godlands, stands as a testament to the enduring nature of this realm. From the shaping of Azeroth by the Titans, to the cataclysmic upheaval and the ceaseless pursuit of knowledge, 
this region remains a source of perpetual fascination. As we bid our farewells, I encourage you to keep in mind the stories of this unique and secluded jungle world. They serve as a reminder of the countless untold tales that still lie in wait, ready to be unearthed. Thank you for joining us on this odyssey through the Ongoro Crater. Until we meet again within the hallowed confines of our library, may your journeys be safe and may the wonders of Azeroth continue to unfurl before you.